Well, now we're dealing with some a new notation, uh, summation notation. This is a, uh, you know, it's kind of fun. It's a Greek letter, uh, sigma, which uh, if you guys are going off to college, you might get familiar with if you get involved in the Greek system. But in mathematics, the sigma, the letter sigma, uh, capital sigma, uh, in, in this case, uh, means summation or to find the sum of. And it's got a whole def a bunch of different parts here that we'll talk about. You have your index of summation and then your lower and upper bounds, which is telling us how far we're going to go. And what you're going to learn from that is it's going to tell us how many terms uh, we have. And then you're going to have some type, of, uh, some type of rule or series in order to follow. And this is just a fancy way or a shortcut, shorthand way for writing a summation. And the best way I think to learn them, understand them, is to go over a few examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here. And the instructions tell us that we need to find these sums. So what this is telling me, if you look here at this very first example, is I have a rule. And this rule should look very familiar because it is the rule, explicit formula uh, for an arithmetic sequence. All right, it's an explicit formula. And this index is telling me to start with an I value, or index value of one, and go up to six. Now think about that. If I start by substituting a one in here and go with a two, then I substitute a three, substitute a four, substitute a five, and substitute a six. So I, technically, the first term here, if I put in a one, I substitute in a one here, I'd get 39 minus seven times zero. So 39 is my first term. Then I substitute a two in here, and I'm gonna get 32. Then I substitute a 3 in here, and I'm going to get 25. Then I substitute a 4 in here, and I'm going to get 18. Then I substitute a 5 in here, I'm going to get 11. And finally, if I substitute a 6 in here, I get a 4. So what this particular, this is the sequence that I'm given, but the sigma of summation is saying, what is the sum of these terms? The sum of these six terms. So what we want to do is find that sum. So we know we have six terms. So we take our six divided by two, and we find the sum of the first and the last. Again, following Gauss's line here, and we get uh, what three times forty-three, which is one hundred and twenty-nine. So this summation would equal one hundred and twenty-nine. Now, do we need to list these out every time? Not so much. Once we know how many terms we've got, we could easily use this, this rule up here, this explicit formula, to find the first and the last. We don't need to use it to find every term in the series. So, for example, here I'm going to begin on number two. I'm going to go from one to eight. My index from one to eight. That means I'm going to have eight terms. So I don't need to find all eight. I just know the first and the last. So I'm going to take my eight divided by two and I'm going to find the first term. So I use my rule up here, and I know that since this is an explicit, it's written in explicit formula form, 12 is going to be my first term. If you want to plug 1 in there for i, that's fine. You're still going to get 12. Now my last term, so I go ahead and I plug 8. Again, I start by substituting 1. You're like, 8. Why am I using 8? Because it's telling me up here that's my upper bound. I use 8. And I get 12 plus 4 times 8 minus 1, which is 12 plus 4 times 7, which is 12 plus 28, which is 40. So I'm going to find out that I have a sum here, when it's all said and done, of 4 times 52, which is 208. So this summation equates to 208. And you keep on scrolling down the page, and you just keep going and trucking through these problems. I'm going to throw these down pretty quick. I know I'm going to have 10 terms right here, so summation of 10. I know that that means I'm going to have to take those 10 and pair them together, right? First and last, second and second from last, so on and so forth. And then I'm going to multiply I'm going to start that by the sum of the first term plus the last term, which in this case, I get that by putting 10 in here. And I get 25 minus 3 times 10 minus 1, which is 25 minus what, 3 times 9, 25 minus 27. So technically, I'm going to get a negative 2 as my last term. I add that 25 and negative 2, get 23. Multiply that times 5, and I get a sum of 115. So this equates to 115. Now, if they don't give you a, an explicit formula, they may give you uh, just a straight-up rule to follow, and that's not a problem at I, either. You know, if I'm still going from 1 to 36, then I'm going to have... 36 terms, 
So I get 36 divided by 2, that number of terms divided by 2. To find the first term, I simply plug 1 in there for i. So in this case, it's not an uh, explicit formula. It's just a straight-up rule to follow. 7 plus 2 times 1 would be 9. That's my first term. And my last term is what I get when I put 36 in there. 7 plus 2 times 36, which would be 7 plus, uh, what, 72 or 79. So that's getting pretty large. And then I just have to crank that out, and I get my 1,584. So this one gets pretty big. But that's sum summation notation. Now what gets a little bit tricky is when they ask us to write these backwards. Okay, if I were to give you the 39, 32, 25, 18, 11, and 4, and I ask you to go backwards, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, and you have to do this on your homework. If I were asked to go backwards, you're like, what do you mean backwards? I mean, if I ask you to write this in summation notation, remember this. Draw your sigma. You may need to practice these. They're not that hard, all right? But you practice that, and you know you're going to write i equals 1. You're normally going to start there, and you say, hey, I have what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's how I know I'm going to 6. I'm going to have 6 terms. So that's not too bad. Drawing the sigma is probably the hardest part so far. Then you just write, essentially write the explicit formula for that particular sequence. So you think to yourself, well, and I'm going to put this all in parentheses. So I know my first term is 39. I can tell that my common difference is a negative 7. And instead of n minus 1, i minus 1, and I've got it. So essentially, you've done this before. You've written explicit, uh, explicit formulas before. Now you're going to write it. You're using this i because that's my index. Other than that, not a major change.